This segment is brought to you by Jigmaster Jigs. When in doubt, get the jig out. Go to jigmasters.com and use promo code PNF20 and save 20% off your next jig order today. Welcome to the Reel Down on Battle and Fin with your hosts, Dan Perry and Jimmy Skinner, where we talk about everything in tournament kayak fishing. Here we go. All right, everybody, welcome back to The Real Deal on Paddle and Finn. Uh, tonight, Jimmy is out. He had, uh, Him and his wife had some good news, but this is going to be the last show before the Christmas break and the holidays, Hanukkah, whatever it is that you celebrate. But with me tonight, we have the founder of Paddle and Finn with the Godfather, um, but we have Mr. Oh, boy. Bush. Uh, thank you for being on, sir. Absolutely, sir. Yep, and if you're watching already, we have two of the best kayak anglers in the country. We appreciate y'all being on, and it was last minute, so an extra special thank you for being on. But we have Casey Reed and Jake Harshman. Thank you, sirs, gentlemen, thank you for being on tonight. Appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'm excited to, to be here. Yeah, it's two guys. I, I, I can't believe we've never had y'all on. I, I Two of the best guys around. Like, I have a list of people that I know I've never gotten talked to, and I don't know how it's been this long that, that I've never gotten to speak with you, but I'm glad it finally happened. So <laughs> it, it happened. So if somebody is living under a rock or somebody is new at kayak fishing, we always want to give everybody an opportunity to kind of give you a quick intro. Uh, we'll start with you, Casey. How do you get into kayak fishing? And just tell everybody a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so, I mean, just getting into kayak fishing, I just actually, one of my ex-girlfriend bought us both $150 kayaks and got out on the water, man. And, I mean, I loved it, just being able to get off the bank and, and get out there and get to spots that I've seen and never been able to reach. And, I mean, it just grew from there, you know, upgrading, 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 and I guess – That'll be how it goes until probably until the day now. <laughs> It'll just be continuing <laughs> to upgrade. <laughs> so. But yeah, you're in that autopilot that like the big dog, the 136 now, right? I don't, you really can't upgrade much more from there. You're kind of topped out now. Uh, yeah, we'll see, man. I mean, with the way things go, yeah, man, that's true. there's always something something <clears throat> new to come out. So. But yeah, I mean, for now, I think I, I think I am in the best kayak, and um, I mean, I love it. But um, but yeah, hopefully down the road, you know, we'll see where it goes and see what else people come out with and what Old Town comes out with, and and you know where it goes from here. And not to get an argument, but the other top out, uh, Jake. I know Jake's in the, uh, you know, the Hobie of three sixty. You're in the twelve, right? Uh, well. Actually, uh -oh. I, just, I just sold the 12 uh, two days ago, and I'm going to pick up a new PA 14 360 tomorrow from Delaware Paddle Sports in uh, Lewes, Delaware. Okay. So, so yeah. arguably the, the best, uh, just the one that comes with a motor standard straight out of the box and the pedal drive. So the two most expensive, motor and pedal drive. So, I mean, you can just, whether they're the best, I guess that's <laughs> arguable. But I mean... I'll, I'll say something that will actually surprise y'all. Um, I personally feel that the best boat for me is an Old Town Predator PDL. Um, but I have a boat that very closely rivals it and I think has equally as great uh, features. And it's more or less just a, it's more me getting used to said boat right yeah. now. Um, and I'm sure maybe after a lot of time in it, I'm going to... I don't know if I'm going to be one of those guys that get a Hobie tattoo, but I, I'm, you know, <laughs> I'll, I'll probably be on the lines of, you know, this is probably the best platform. It, it's a pretty amazing boat. The things that you can do and maneuverability with it is pretty amazing. So, yeah, not not <clears throat> start an argument there. That that wasn't what this is. But yeah. all right, Jake. So uh, <laughs> if people don't know who you are, both great kayaks. Um, if if people don't know who you are, okay, give them a little rundown. How do you get into kayak fishing, man? So I started kayak fishing about three years ago, um, and 
prior to that, I'd fished all my life, you know, mostly for trout or really whatever would bite. Um, my first boat was an Ascend. I spent about a week in that before I realized that it wasn't for me. And then and you I'm, ascended. What's that? And then you ascended to something yeah. else. Yes. Then I, I went to uh, Five Mountain Outfitters in Shikshini, Pennsylvania and bought my first PDL. And uh, I mean, after that, man, it's just that, that you know, it just like Casey said, it just keeps getting more and more and more. And, you know, I mean, like at this point, I mean, yeah, I love kayak fishing, though. Like I've fished out of boats and I don't like it nearly as much as I like fishing out of a kayak. You're so close to the water. And the experience to me, you're just more in tune with it. There you go. Yeah, I mean, me and Brian both, we, we both came from a boat, so we know how that is, you know. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I don't think I'll ever go back, man. I mean, no. I like, like Jake said, you're more in tune with everything going down and everything around you, you know. Plus it costs. Plus, I mean, the cost, the upkeep. Yeah. You know, the maintaining the motor and, and winterizing your boat, especially for where, I, where I'm at. And it just, you know, the storage of it. I, I can store three boats in my garage right now versus sure. one, you know. Um, there's a lot of really cool things about kayak fishing. Yeah. I think especially probably for you being by the Susquehanna, it's just out of necessity too, right? Uh, yeah. So what the guys that run boats here – <laughs> they run some specialized machines yeah. and like the, you know, these boats have like up armor on the bottom of them, you know, two, three inch thicks, you know, up armor and, and they're running the jet motors, the, you know, that are basically they, these guys can run in inches of water on plane. Um, and, you know, they got to watch out for rocks, but even then if they got them real thick bottoms on them, they can bounce off of most rocks. Um, they, they, it takes a special kind of, of jacked up individual to run 40, 50 miles an hour in the Susquehanna river. I've, I've seen the videos of people doing yeah. that man, and it blows my mind. Like I, there's no way you would get me in a boat, much less driving that boat in, in that shallow water, man. Like, I don't care how experienced you are. That's nuts. If you want to see your life or your eyes, take a ride <laughs> with my buddy in his, in his, um, in his jet boat. And man, when you go across a gravel bar that's two inches deep and he's like, you got to go this way up through it. And then you got to make a cut back and then go straight. That way you don't hit the rock. And I'm like, we're and what? And he's like, we got to do it at 40 to 50 miles an hour, because if not, we're going to bottom out. And I'm like, no, nah. OK, I'm just going <laughs> to my eyes. Let's <laughs> I'm good, man. Oh. Let's roll. But Wow. So one of the major reasons we wanted to have y'all on is, uh, I mean, going back and looking through your tourney acts, y'all fished a lot of tournaments this year. I mean, uh, Jake, you fished a lot, but Casey, good God, man, how did you fish so many tournaments in one year? Like this is, I mean, I, I fish a lot of tournaments. Jake fishes a lot of tournaments, but man, I, I, I don't know how you got so much time to fish so many tournaments. It's, I mean, uh, you, you fished a lot this year, especially with COVID. But uh, we, we just kind of wanted to go over your season and how, uh, just kind of take a look back of how it went and how kind of lessons learned, how you, how you think, how, you, how did it go for you, what did you learn, and going in next season and what, what others can learn from your season, I guess. So at, we'll start with you, Casey. How, how do you think your season went compared to, I, I guess everybody's 2020 season went a lot different than what you thought it would going into how it would just with COVID, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, after after like March hit, you know, we didn't really know what was going to happen, like how, what was really going to go on. And yeah. I mean, luckily, events started popping up, and you know, we kind of finished off the season fairly normally. So, um, so that was that was great. But, um, but yeah, there for a while, it was, it was like, man, what what's gonna happen? What are what are we doing? And um, luckily, like that, that, that five live kind of came around that Scott Butcher was doing, and like that was really yeah. cool. That sparked a lot of ideas and a lot of 
movement to people trying different things with the with the live aspect of it and um so i'm I'm really excited for that and to see see kind of where that goes um but yeah i mean as far as the tournaments man when i when i think back on the season i mean for me the season just sucked like put it put it kind of bluntly like it was it was tough um and i, I mean i when when I go back and look at Tourney X, like like when you asked me to do this, man, I, I could I could barely even remember what events I fished. You know, it's just felt like such a long year. But I went back and looked, and I mean, obviously, I finished eleventh in the KBF Angler of the Year points overall. So I mean, it wasn't really that bad of a season, but it just felt so bad. And maybe that's because I just fished so many events and and you know had some really bad ones, but had a few decent ones thrown in there as well. So yeah. 11th overall. Hey, that's not, I mean, uh, there's a lot of people fish KBF. I mean, the, uh, to finish 11th overall, there's a lot of people that you beat that are some of the best names around. I mean, don't, don't kick yourself too hard over coming at 11th. You know I mean? That's, that, that, that's a hell of an accomplishment. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with, with where I finished, like going in before the Smith mountain Lake event. I mean, I didn't, I didn't think I had a shot at getting into the 10 at all. And um, to, to come that close, like kind of really blew my mind there, there at the end. So, I mean, I'm, I'm happy with where I finished overall. And um, that last event at Smith Mountain Lake really saved me. But, um, yeah. but yeah, I mean, it was, it was a tough season overall. And like I said, had a few good finishes, but I mean, like, I guess if you want to talk about the season, you know, we started down in, uh, in Florida for the 10 for, for last year, which I did make. And um, Aaron kind of, check. yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, that was very nice going in. I mean, we got, we got sent the check before we even went down there. So it was really nice having that money in the pocket um, to, to be able to make that trip. And then, I mean, we got down there and freaking staying in a mansion. I mean, that was, that was unbelievable, but um, to get out there and fish and, you know, some of the best waters, in the country and um like I, I struggled down there caught some good fish um but um couldn't couldn't really put it together on that last day and i, I think I, I think i didn't finish with the limit the, the last day but um but uh, on that first day freaking catching what i what i'd estimate to be a nine pounder man just <laughs> in a tournament like that is is the awesome. best in the world yeah that 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 doesn't really suit your strong suits though, right? Because you're more like a a deep guy, graphing. I I know you're kind of known for the shaky head, right? That's kind of the mo. Casey throws a shaky head, right? Yeah, yeah, and and uh, yeah, it grass. Me and grass don't really get along so well. I mean, over the past two years, I've come to accept that I got to learn it and. Uh, you know understand it better and get more confident in it so it's a kind of a work in progress but um but come on yeah, down I'll, I'll, I'll put you up you can come stay with me i'll i'll show you some grass down here in alabama <laughs> yeah definitely that's definitely what i need man for sure um, yeah Jay? so oh i'm sorry go ahead uh, i was just gonna keep going with the season so like you know we had we had the 10 kind of finish that off. I finished seventh place out of the, I think it ended up being 12 people in it, which, you know, I was content with at the time, like, you know, with, with as struggling as I did pre-fishing and all that to, to be able to, to be able to not finish dead last, like <laughs> was a good thing. So, yeah, especially when you're fishing against the, that, that high caliber guys there, you know, so, um, then we, you know, I was we. Santee Cooper was the next event, man, and I always look forward to Santee Cooper. Um, and that was actually, no, that wasn't the one. That that was before KBF started doing the two day events because they switched to that this year, or the the one event on Saturday and one on Sunday. But anyways, right. they, they they did the one Saturday event, and I think I ended up with four fish, four fish, and I placed like. 15th place or something because yeah, that 15th out 134 and that was at the end of february and i mean 
COVID really hit. Like, my birthday is March 17th, and that's kind of like the day of COVID kind of before and after. So it was right before kind yep. of the time. It, you know, it really, really happened. So 15th out of 134, that's a, that was a heck of a finish. You know, made a good check there. And then, you know, so, I mean, to do there before – that that's a good event for sure. So your first two events of the year, cash checks, first two events start off great. Yeah, not not terrible at all, you know, going into it. But it just it was a real bummer having having four fish and still being in fifteenth spot. You know that one fish, I, I it was something. I had a pattern going on pre fishing, and I just really couldn't make it happen on on um, tournament day. Even though I knew people were doing the same thing, I was watching them. And they were catching fish that same way, and um, I just couldn't couldn't make it happen. So I changed up and started getting bit, and was able to at least recover a little bit. But you know, another hour or so, I'd have had that fifth fish, and you know, had that that right there, five fish that day, one, one spot up in any of the tournament, any of the KBF tournaments this year would have put me into the ten, basically. Um, oh, yeah. So. That is kind of disappointing thinking back on it, but like I said, I'm still I'm I'm still happy with how it went. Everything's kind of played out, I guess how it how it was meant to be. Um, just got next year to look forward to now. So. so it was that close then, just one one place. Yeah, would, would have done it. One spot, any event would have would have tied me uh, with the with the guy in tenth place. So. I mean, you look at that. That could have been that could have been a quarter of an inch at, at one of those events, you know, would have, or maybe even a tiebreaker or something would have would have put me put me in there. <laughs> wow. So it like, yeah, well, I'm I'm not going to rub it in any harder than that. I'll <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll let that be. But I mean, so CKA event on Sharon Harris, second of ninety second, um, KBF challenge fourth of. 42 uh v another state challenge second uh 12th and the yak attack benefit tournament you got first out of 114th in may um i mean you know that's always a great event every year I, I, that's one I, i've always wanted to fish I, how is that event for anybody that hasn't done it because you, you have to sign up early right yeah, so they they open up registration. They only take a limited number of people because of the the um the facility that they have it hosted at. You know, it's a pretty small facility, so I think they take what like a hundred or hundred fifteen something like that people. And they uh, they let they let the people that have been for like three or four years in a row, they let them all get first dibs at those spots. So automatically, when they go to open up registration, you've already got you know you're down to seventy five total so i mean it sold out in in two minutes i'm pretty sure two, two years ago i'm pretty sure it sold out in like two minutes wow and then the i mean just regional tournaments all lines first of 47 first of 32 second of 22 first of 53 first of 30 i mean you are constantly cashing checks and those man um uh, another online, a hundred first of twenty. I mean, it's, dude. I I do not want to fish against you in an online tournament. The, uh, <laughs> yeah, state second, second of twenty one. Yeah, you, know, you gotta watch that old dude out there night fishing. Seriously, good God, <laughs> Jackson. So Online's man. I can spend my time out there at night, dude. I, yeah, I love it. It's, it's the greatest. It's Nobody else is out there. Uh, and then, like you said, the the super trail, and then you cleaned up there first to forty one, uh, and then the challenge series championship twentieth of two twenty four. Uh, so I mean, it, you really did. And at the end of the at the end of the year, trail series championship eighteenth of one twenty seven, uh, national championship forty first of two eighty one. That's a great finish. I mean, it, you know, forty first is like I uh, did okay, but forty first of two eighty one. That's still a great finish, man. So, all in all, it was a great year. And like you said, still 11th of KBF AOY points. You know, that's a good year in my book. Absolutely. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, a, it was a fun one, man. It was just, it just seemed like a grind going through it. And then, 
again, to be able to finish up, uh, you know, winning the Smith Mountain Lake event, like I, I going into that, I was, I was wanting to do good because everybody was expecting me to do good. Um, yeah. I think more, most people would think I fished Smith Mountain Lake a whole lot. Which I mean, I do certain times of the year, but not that time of the year. I I I don't go there that time of the year. So um, so I got some days pre fishing in and felt confident. You know, I could at least get a limit and then to, to go out there and I mean, catch what I did. Like I do, I that was that was the definitely highlight of the year for sure. It is is it tougher going into an event whenever? I mean, I've never went into an event where everybody thought, hey, Dan's going to win this one. <laughs> is is it kind of more pressure? That Was it tougher and to win an event whenever everybody thinks you're the dude? I mean, I don't know. I wouldn't I wouldn't say that, but I just knew going into it, people, people know me for Smith Mountain Lake, even though that's kind of – it's kind of not true. Plus, I mean, when I fish Smith Mountain Lake, I'm fishing at night, like, it's it's a totally different kind of beast uh, out fishing at night when the time of year that I do during the spring. And I mean, yeah, I can put up big numbers then. Any other time of the year, man, I struggle just it, I, just as much as anybody out there. Like getting a limit is tough, man. And um, so so to be able to go out there and like I said, I had some days pre fishing and fished water that I've never fished before. Um, and was able to go out there, find some spots and, and, you know, during pre-fishing, I was finding small fish, which at that point I was just happy to be catching fish. And then for whatever reason on tournament day, I mean, first thing that morning, catch like a 17 and then a 16. And I I hadn't seen those fish at all pre-fishing. So, so Mm -hmm. kind of, and I knew it was going to be good. And it, it, yeah, it turned out to be better than I expected for sure. Cool. So, Jake, we'll go over to you now. Uh, I mean, we know how your year started. You had a great year, made it to the TOC, which, I mean, for a lot of people, if you're fishing Hobie, that was kind of the, you know, that's what everybody was going for. And you start out this year with a bang, the Hobie uh, on Lake Seminole, where I absolutely stunk it up. I, I I don't know how we didn't have you on for that episode. It was I know at that time we were still everybody was fighting with trying to have a show on at the same time. So uh, you start off Seminole first. Tell me a le- man, how did you find him on Seminole since we didn't have you on for that? <laughs> so I, I mean was, I I know we're going back there, so you don't no, mind okay. talking too much. I, but. I don't I don't mind talking about it. Um, okay, tell me exactly <laughs> how you called him. Then. All right, I'll send you I'll send you a waypoint. <laughs> Uh, it's going to be Kurt Smith's waypoint, but I'm going to send it to you anyway. Um, he came in third, so you're still Kurt, good. I was at the same launch as Kurt. <laughs> so it, 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 all, it really all started out kind of cool. And Casey knows the Old Town crew met down in Florida, and, and we got to get out and experience that new boat. Um, and after that, I left there. Casey went to the 10, and I went up the Seminole. In that entire week that I was there, I caught five fish in the lake. And not a single one of them was bigger than 17 inches. And I was thoroughly confused. You know the weather patterns were all over the place. It would be 30 degrees one day and 60 the next. And water was high and muddy and cold. Um, So I I basically went to what I know, which is moving water. Um, And I... I, uh, I was able to put a pattern together <clears throat> doing what they should have been doing that time of year um, on tournament day. But the place I went to on tournament day was basically sight unseen. The only thing I had done at that place was literally drove to the ramp, found it, made sure it was public access. And then I showed up there on tournament day and I literally sat in my boat until lines in because I didn't know where to start. Um, <clears throat> so I, I, I got out, you know, got on the water and and started catching pickerel first thing in the morning. And I'm like, well, this is not good. This is not not the intended species. And, and then I, I caught, um, I caught what I figured were a bunch of male bass. And then as I moved out to a little bit deeper water, just like they should have been, the females were staging out just a little bit deeper, getting ready to come in and spawn. 
So I ended up catching a small limit, like first thing in the morning within 30 minutes. And then um, when I got out to a little bit deeper water, I mean, I, I had two fish back to back. One was like 19 and a half. One was 19 and three quarters. And then I caught a 17 and a something. Um, <clears throat> and then I was like, well, crap. I'm like, let me upload all these fish and look at the leaderboard. And I uploaded my fish and I was like, I'm oh. the only one that has fish. <laughs> no, no, that was that was the, the, the day that Josh Counts put up like 104 oh, in the first yeah, hour. Yeah. That's right. So so I, I upload all my fish and I, and I see that I'm in the high 80s and I'm like, oh, cool, second place. I'm like, who whacked him? And I look at it and I'm like, wow. I'm like, that's that's a lot. So at that point, I was just kind of like, well, you know, I, this is all I have. So let me go explore and see if I can find something else. And I went a diff- couple different places. I got a couple upgrades. And as I was coming back down to my spot, like it was it was close to lines. It was close to lines out. I maybe had an hour or so left in the day. Coming back down to my spot and I watched a bass boat pull into my spot and catch a six pounder. And the very next cast caught a seven pounder out of my spot. And I, I, I literally pe- <laughs> pedaled over to him. And I asked him the most outlandish question I've ever asked anybody in my entire life. And I said, sir, would you please not like, would you please not catch any more of these fish? Um, and I explained, I explained to him why. And, and he's like, yeah, I can do that for you. He's like, you're not taking them, are you? I'm like, no, sir. I, I catch them. I measure them. I put them right back. He goes, okay, well, I was just here pre-fishing for a tournament we have next week. It's all yours. And he bounced. And I was wow. like, holy. Wow. Uh, I don't know if I could curse, but I, I was I was amazed. Um, up here, if I would have done that on the upper Chesapeake Bay, I might have gotten a gun pulled on me. Um, like it's you know. It's I hope you're sending that dude a Christmas card. I wish I would have got his name and address, man. I would have sent I would have sent him something. I would have sent him something for sure. But I, I went back and and after he left, I you know I kind of just sat there and played around in that spot for a little bit, just kind of graphing and, and seeing what all was there and I was casting of course and I I have felt a couple bites and I shook them off and there's one fish that just would not let go like I was throwing a shaky head in 15 15 to 20 feet of water and I felt this fish pick it up swam out into the current I watched like my line moved out into the current he swam back into an eddy and he wouldn't let go of it so i i i lit him up and it was a it was a i think it was another 19 inch fish or it was either 19 or an 18 and it set me at 92 and something you know and i was like nine inches back from from josh counts who was in the lead um day two was a lot tougher the weather conditions again changed um it got warm the sun was high um and a lot of people's patterns changed um i ended up going back to the same spot and I caught a couple 17 inch fish early in the morning, but I struggled the entire day after that to catch a limit. I, I didn't uh, catch my fifth fish until 45 minutes before lines out. And that fifth fish just ended up being a seven pounder. It went a little over, I think it was almost 22 inches. And that set me one inch, exactly one inch above Josh counts. And that's, that's the way it ended. So, um, it was, a, it was, you know, I, I, I peaked really early in the year. Um, I wasn't expecting that, you know, not, I had not had that kind of success, um, you know, on a national stage up until that point. And, you know, I, I, I was, I was really happy and excited about that and kind of carried over a little bit into, uh, Logan Martin for the first yeah. bass event. Um, we, you know, I met 13th out 222. Yeah. Um, that was kind of, that was, again, that was another situation where I was sight unseen. I I didn't have an opportunity to pre-fish down there. Um, I, I did not bring a boat with me down there because I I knew I was meeting there with the old town crew and, and, and getting a boat. Um, and I, I literally went to where we did the live launch of the, of the new boat and left out of there and 
my morning started off terrible. I, I went to a spot as I was sitting there looking at Navionics. I was like, oh, I'll go check this out. And I get over there, and as soon as I got over there, I, I broke a prop on a on a rock. And fortunately enough, I, I brought my extra stuff. Um, so I was able to change out my prop. My fish finder wouldn't work. I must have done something when I was wiring it up and had wires crossed up or something. Um, so I didn't have a fish finder. And then the monsoon started. Um, and I just... I, I just found a I found a, a spot, man. I, I, I got into the back of a creek down there and water was was pushing in like an absurd amount of water was pushing in. And <clears throat> those spots were just right up in that current. And you know, it was uh, dude when when the monsoon started, I probably there was a period of time where I probably caught man, maybe even twenty fish in a row. It was like every cast. Um, and I lost a couple, a couple real, real good fish. Um, I was using a wacky rig Senko and I had a couple come unbuttoned that really, I, I could have looking back at it. I, I, I could have walked the stage there. Um, if I would have landed those fish, but I don't know exactly how, how big they were, but I, they were significant. Both of them were, um, so, so I, you, I felt you, you were down South with everybody else with, uh, with the old town crew. No, I mean down at the lower end of the lake. Um, is that I don't I don't even remember what launch I was at. To oh. be completely honest with you, I, wherever matter. we wherever we did the live launch with Old Town, I don't remember what it was called, where we were at. I literally just I just went out and and, and just went out. Um, yeah, I I didn't uh, I didn't have much much going on with that until I got out there and found it. Um, I had, I had a guy, I had a guy come in on me while I was fishing that spot and he started making small talk, talking to me and everything. And, and then he kind of posted up with his, with his boat and started casting into the same hole. And I was like, uh, Hey, Hey bud. I said, I'm right now I'm sitting in fourth and I'm not trying to be an asshole, but I really don't want to share these fish with you. And and he said, well, I pre-fished here. And I, and at that point I was like, I didn't, but I got here first and, and then he left. So that was kind of fortunate for me. Cause I really didn't want to have to sit there and fight for fish with somebody else. I mean, he literally posted up on the other side of the current and was casting into the same hole I was cast into. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Wow. Huh. But, um, after hey, that, man, put him on blast right now. If you want, if you know his I, name, I got a picture of him. I got, cause I, <laughs> I, I literally I took a picture of this because I, I I didn't know if it was going to become an issue and I, I I took a picture of how close he was, um, but I don't you know it is what it is it's over now but um, after that I think we had Lake Norman which I was just talking about Lake Norman on KBN not too long ago and and how my live scope kind of failed me a little bit. I went to a spot in pre-fishing, found some really good fish. I caught two really nice fish, um, and I found a big school, uh, and, uh, and there was an underwater culvert leading to an area of the lake that, that no one could get to. It was, it was basically, there was no boat ramp on the other side. There was water that would go there from the lake, and on the other side was, was you know, a small cove with some houses around it, but no one could get in there to fish it from, unless they lived there. You know, it was all private property. So I, <clears throat> I found these fish there and, and I, you know, I posted up there and on tournament day and it, it was just, a, I was on that struggle bus, man. I couldn't find anything big. I think on day one, I only ended up with four fish and day fifth, I had, or day two, I had to scrounge to get my fifth fish at the, at the end. And I didn't do well there. Um, I was happy when COVID canceled Lake Erie. I hate Lake Erie. And, if, and and that that's the thing if and kind of if you're interested in the live scope deal check out Jake's YouTube he's one of the only people that has that that set up on his kayak so go to his YouTube page and check it out that's it's, it's really interesting how you have it set up it's gotten I will say that it's, it it has gotten a lot more popular with kayakers now um and I think it's going to get even more popular because I think I think Humminbird's coming out with something. I've seen some rumblings about that, and I know that uh, Lawrence just came out with theirs. Yeah, Lawrence just came out with a, a better system to compete with the live scope. Um, 
it, it's a, it's a cool deal, man. Especially if you're deep water fishing, um, you can you can put that thing to down view and you can see everything as it's happening. Like it's it's wild. Um, you know, it it's pretty cool. I I do enjoy it. I like it. Um, I was I was actually eager to fish Lake Erie with it, but then they canceled it. And I I mean I don't like fishing Lake Erie. I'm not a big fan of it. So I was kind of happy that that got canceled. Um, I think from there I went to Kentucky Lake, had a really good day one. Uh, day two I got a little bit stubborn and and didn't catch a limit. Uh, I think I still finished in the top thirty. Yeah. yeah. At that one twenty nine, still okay. a good finish, you know. Yeah, it, it wasn't wasn't bad. I just I was sitting in fifth place, I think, after day one, which was kind of, you know, it was kind of a letdown to to be in that kind of position. Um, we had the KBF Susquehanna event, which I caught a new personal best smallmouth there, almost right. twenty two inches, and and I would estimate I didn't make I didn't weigh it, but I would estimate that fish to be close to, if not over six pounds. And that was a topwater bite, which was That's nice. even more fun. Um, huh. It's fun to catch big ones. It's fun to catch big ones during a tournament, but it is it is another thing to catch a big one on a whopper plopper 130 in less than two feet of water. Uh, that fish there was is. wild. Um, it was <laughs> that was fun. Um, and. And that, there you got six out of fifty-four. Yeah. Uh, there's the Hobie BS BOS Mississippi River. I still got the first twenty-five uh, percent out of that. Did good there. Uh, Mid Atlantic KBF did good there. Ninth. Uh, Hobie uh, the Susquehanna River. Uh, I, yeah, I struggled on yeah. that. One. Yeah, so, we, we, won't, we we won't talk about that one. We'll just skip. No, over. We, we we can talk about it. I don't. I mean, well, I, I guess it's lessons learned too. I mean, so I mean, was it just your home event and just kind of maybe too much information? So, I it, it wasn't so much too much information. I, I had a really good pattern. I knew what I wanted to do. I knew that the fish were shallow. I knew that they were hitting top water. Um, that's kind of like what the Susquehanna smallmouth do between July and, and the fall is, is they, they will annihilate top water. Um, <clears throat> so they get real shallow in, in fast water and, and they just go absolutely batshit crazy over, over anything on top. Um, I had a good pattern and within the first two hours of the day, I had four fish and then I got a migraine on day one. Mm -hmm. uh, I went over and I literally sat in the shade against the bank casting. Um, and then someone came down the river and, and hooked me up with some Tylenol, took that, waited for the migraine to kind of subside a little bit, but I just didn't have enough time left at the end of the day. I lost a couple fish after that. Um, and day two, man, I knew, you know, I think I had like 74 or something inches like that on day one. I knew that I needed a hundred inches. Um, and day two, I went out and I threw nothing smaller than a six inch bull shad or a whopper plopper 130. And I ended up catching one 17 inch fish. But it, I didn't care, like, yeah. I, I didn't care about where I finished as far as, you know, maybe I get 20th place if I catch a limit. I wanted to be in the money. I wanted to, to be there because it, you know, I, I don't know. It, it was probably a mental error to do that, but I knew I needed a hundred inches to be where I wanted to be. So, um, <clears throat> you know, that was, that was a, it was a rough tournament for me, but you know, you have those Mississippi river was fun. I have never been to a place where I've caught more fish than that place. Like that, it was nonstop all day long fish after fish, after fish, after fish. And there was like, four of us in the same area just i mean we beat that i mean we beat the death into them like it was ridiculous the between the four of us i think there was on day one there were five limits caught out of that one spot and on day two there were four limits caught out of that day out of that one spot and we were just hammering it and we were all catching them um and i think we were all doing different things too like it that that's a fun it's a fun fishery and that's you know i know kbf's been there uh, bass was there this past year and and night you know hobie's been there and they're going even back there too to a different time of the year but it was a fun place to fish really fun place to fish 
That's yeah. Brian. That's true. He loves it up there. Yeah. Oh yeah. Look up on that river, man. You, if you can find them like that, dude, you can sit there and wear them out. <laughs> and that's yeah. what it was, man. That's what it was. We, dude, I, I, I think all day long, dude, I was just casting a wacky rig Cinco up in the current and letting the current push it where it wanted to go. And, and it was, you know, boom, 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 boom. It was fun. Um, and it was a mixture of large mouth and small mouth. I had my limit there. Um, did the Ike charity event in New Jersey, which was probably on the toughest, most pressured body of water that you can find in the state of New Jersey. Um, I did not have a good event there, but I, I, what was cool about that event is that was my son's birthday and that was the first tournament that he had ever entered and he stuck it out all day long, even though he didn't catch anything. He grinded and I was, I was, I was proud of him. Like he, you know, at at the end of the day, I'm like, how, how do you think you did? And he's like, well, I'm sorry. I didn't catch any. I'm like, bud, I'm like, you didn't stop trying. You know, you, you did exactly what you were supposed to do. And, and it's, you know, it's one thing about tournament fishing. People are like, how, how do you do well in tournament fishing? I cast a lot. (laughs) I cast a lot, a lot. There's never a time that my line's not in the water. You can't catch them. If your line is not in the water, I cast a lot. I don't make great choices. <laughs> Sometimes I get lucky, but I cast a lot. Um, we went f- down to the Coosa River, and that was another. That, yeah. was, that was a good event. That was a good event for you. Yeah, I I had a I had a fun time down there. It, it, I think it was the first time all year long that pre fishing and tournament fishing coincided and like connected with each other like i did i did a lot of homework for that event because i knew i wanted to have a good finish there to make it to the toc base well not to make it to the toc but to to have myself in contention for that aoi still so i knew i needed a good event there um i did a lot of homework found a really cool spot that was i I watched the videos of that that was a beautiful area i'm from here like I live an hour and a half from there, and I've never wherever you were at. I've never been there, and that was a beautiful area you were at. It was it was a canal going from the main river to a feeding flat, and it was constantly reloading, and there were constant fish moving in and out. Um, it was it was a really cool deal. Um, me, Christine Fisher, Jackson Orr, Jim Ware, all four of us had found it independently of each other, um, and we all showed up there on day one. And Christine and I, I think, had the best two limits out of that area. So we primarily were the ones who fished it on day two. And there was another guy that came in there as well. Um, but, you know, that that was a cool deal, man, because everything, like I said, everything, it was the first time everything clicked. You know, the first time we're pre-fishing, what I did in pre-fishing was how I had success in the tournament. Um, and, you know, what kind of waited till late in the year to do that. But, um you know, after that, it was a it was a long wait to the TOC. It felt like it felt like forever. I was really excited to get down there. I love fishing the Tennessee River. Um, any it doesn't matter what body of water on the Tennessee River. I love them all. Um, I found some really good fish in pre fishing, and I went against what I what would be considered my strength, and I didn't go to the river. And I actually fished Fort Loudon. I think I had the second or third best limit out of Fort Loudon. And the river guys really dominated. The the folks that fished up there, they, you know, they, they dominated. I just, yeah. yeah. And I, I made the mistake. I think the mistake I made there is I probably should have went to the river on day one. Um, and then went to the spot where I found my, my fish out on day two. I think I would have done a little bit better, but, um, you know, it is what it is. I think I well, you, I think I finished fifteenth there, and then overall in the AOI points, I finished ninth for the Hobie BOS. So, I am in no way, shape, or form dissatisfied with that, especially no. considering the the group the group of folks that that probably, you know, <laughs> bless you, <laughs> that, <laughs> that, that event those events. Um, I'd like to see Casey out there next year. I don't, know can, I don't know if he can fit it into his busy schedule or not, but yeah, I definitely, I'm, I'm definitely gonna fish a Hobie or two next year, man. So uh, I, I'm definitely gonna make it up to the Mississippi River, man. 
I don't know. I mean, I'm hoping Bass goes back there too. They haven't released their schedule, but um, but yeah. After after last year and the past two years I've spent up there, dude, I'm I'm ready to go back. So so that There's one's a, definitely going to be on the. I mean, Hartwell's down there, kind of close to you. I mean, it's within reach for you. I don't know if that's on a day that you can make it or not. Me and Hartwell didn't get along this year, but yeah, <laughs> yeah we'll we'll see about it. We'll, we'll see. Cause it, it's it's a beautiful place, man. I, I like it. I just struggled there, but um, but you know, try to maybe try to go get some redemption for sure. Yeah, so kind of except for the bass events because their schedule isn't out yet. Which why isn't it out yet? But the uh, what what are y'all? What are your plans for twenty twenty one? You want me to keep talking? Put together. Okay. I didn't have plans put together this year, so. I, that's just kind of how I'm rolling. So I'll have, I'm just going to fish what I can when I can. And you know, so roll happen. all over the online again for sure. Definitely take that money. Yeah. Yeah. That's the plan, man. Um, that's always a good little source of income um, to, to try to be able to fall back on. But competition keeps getting stiffer, man. We got a guy kept smoking me this year in the state the state uh challenges so like i mean dude he was putting up 107 108 109 110 inches and like i was i was right up with him but like i think i beat him once in the actual state challenges so who who was that casey i'm sorry who was that person man you know i, I wish I, I i don't recall his name off the top of my head um i i met him this year i, I met him at the one of the tournaments but um at the national championship i guess but um but yeah dude i i i can't i I can't remember his name off the top of my head but um he was freaking killing it yes i mean i know you said you're kind of going by the seat of your pants what whatever you can make you can you're gonna fish um i wish i had that kind of flexibility (laughs) i don't you know, for me, I have to I have to kind of plan things out with my job because if not, then I, I if I don't plan it, I'm not going to get to fish it. I actually have a full schedule though. I, I listed <clears throat> basically everything out. Um, I, I got to go back to Seminole. I mean, right? That's right. Isn't, isn't that? Be- isn't that a necessity? You can have my money again. I'll get <laughs> shoot, man. I hope. <laughs> It, my my spot's going to be strictly dependent upon water conditions. If the water conditions are not the same, my spot is not going to be worth the crap. So it's it, it's it's a week later. I'm hoping it's a, a week yeah. warmer. You know, we'll see how it goes. I don't know, but um, starting out at Seminole and then making a quick turn and going to Watts Bar. Um, Watts Bar is going to be legit. That's what I hear. Yeah. There is so many people you talk to, and they're telling, they're saying that Watts Bar is the new Chickamauga. I mean, that place has been, from what I understand, has been stocked with Florida strain for past few years, and they got some some downright giants um, down there. Um, I'm gonna try to make the kbf and makbf deal on the potomac it, it coincides with a look with my local club which is the makbf um i'm gonna try to make all their events this year which they have a pretty good schedule um <clears throat> but i'm gonna try to make that co-hosted event on the national level there with kbf uh the potomac in may is a, is a on fire fishery and then hartwell followed that by champlain and then we come right back here to the Susquehanna and then the Mississippi River and then Pickwick. And hopefully if all all goes well, I, I'll i be in Eufaula in November. That's the goal. Yeah. I'm playing with the Gators down there. Me and Jim Clark, we're going to go down there and play with the Gators. Uh, yeah. Nope. I, I, I will say you said that, uh, that that lake would be good. I think Pickwick with KBF – when they're going to be there in March, I think that's going to be the biggest, uh, the biggest bags of the year. I think it, somebody is probably going to put up like, I think it might be somebody might get 110 there. It's, I think Pickwick is going to be one or something. It's going to be stupid, yeah. stupid, stupid in March. I yeah. think it's going to be one with smallmouth though. Maybe 
I can't, I can't fish it. There's a local, a local club here because Pickwick is my favorite lake, and they there's a local club who has a tournament the same day that I have I have to fish that event. Or so I, my DMs are open to waypoints. Yeah, I'm. I'm <laughs> it only takes money. It only takes money. But there's. Yeah, but- I, I can't give anything out because September, although it's different, yeah, September is Hobie, and I'm definitely fishing that event. So. Oh, so you are fishing the Hobie? Well, I'm yeah, I'm fishing okay. Seminole, and then I'm going to fish that. I got so, you. Yeah. Oh, I'm definitely fishing. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll see you at Pickwick then. Yeah, but that's so much different, you know, different times of year. Yeah, of course. But yeah, March, that, that KBF Pickwick, if anybody's looking for – the tournament of the year for the biggest fish, that's going to be it. That's going to be stupid. But Watts Bar, too. Yeah, I'm sure it's going to be a great event. Watts Bar, I think it's going to be tough, though, man. Yeah. Tennis, north, north, or what is it, northeastern Tennessee in February, dude? Like, it's not going to be warm. It's not like Florida and Georgia. No, <laughs> no. It's, are dry it's going to be stupid cold. So, so I kind of, out of all the, was there one, one bait? Like, if somebody's listening to this, is there one bait from this year that that you should tell people this is the bait that you should be fishing that you're not fishing, or maybe that everybody fishes that you should be fishing? An Alabama rig whopper plopper rig. Just you <laughs> want to put five whopper ploppers on an Alabama rig and, and get you an eight foot extra heavy moderate, and you'll catch them all day. Plop Senko. <laughs> No, I, I I don't know what Casey's gonna say, but for me it was a it was a jackhammer chatterbait. Um, such a I mean it's no secret. I think that bait's won millions of dollars over the past ten years, and um, you know, I've gotten proficient enough where I can skip that thing into places that, it, you know, it it gives them a different look, and I that's what that's how I had success on Seminole, was I was putting you know, $15 jackhammers deep into wood, um, which is not something that I would do if I was fun fishing. But, um, you know, that's <clears throat> that's how I really got into those fish because they were tight to wood. They were really tight. And and same thing at the Kusa, you know, uh, skipping that thing. I was skipping it deep, like in the middle of trees yeah. and, and just kind of working it out real slow. And it was just getting crashed on, you know. For me, it's that bait. A uh, close second to that would probably be uh, the Kitech Tungsten Finesse Jig. I really like that bait. That bait did really well for me this year. What's your jackhammer trailer? Um, I, I It depends on what I'm trying to imitate. If I'm trying to imitate a shad, I either use uh, either a Razor Shad or um, uh, a Yamamoto Zeko. And if I'm trying to imitate like a bluegill, I will actually take a palmetto bug and rig it vertical. Okay. And that way it gives it that bigger profile. Um, and then uh, for for the cross style, if I'm fishing something on the bottom, I'll either use a cross Z by Z Man or the uh, I like the Zoom Speed Crawl on that too. Those are those are basically I think the only trailers. That I that I run on those. Okay. How about you, Casey? I mean, dude, this year for me, it, there hasn't been one bait individually. But I guess the bait that I've had the most fun throwing this year, and I did good on a tournament or two at it, um, was a crankbait um, throwing throwing a rock crawler like that. That was really fun this year, especially yeah. catching freaking flatheads. Or that at Gunnersville, man. I put up a limit of like 130 inches with five fish and flatheads in one day. <laughs> yeah. Nice. That was insane. Along with, you know, 20, 20, 30 bass. But um that that was really fun, man. That that was something that I hadn't really done before a whole lot. Just just sit there and literally throw that crankbait all day long. Um I mean I would have loved to say I caught them all on a shaky head all year long like I did last year, but the shaky head kind of kind of failed me a little bit this year. But um, but that's how it goes. 
But uh, yeah, that, that crankbait, um, like Jake said, I threw the jackhammer quite a bit, man. I've, I've really gotten to love that thing. When it first came out, I did not like it at all. Um, I, I wasn't fishing it how everybody generally fishes it, and, and that's why I didn't like it. And so I've gotten a little more confident in throwing it, throwing it up shallow water, um, you know, skipping it, skipping it in lay downs, throwing it around grass. So, so it's really, it, it caught me definitely a few key fish this year. Um, but. I think the biggest mistake people make with the jackhammer is they, they work it too fast. You know, yeah, that's, and that's what I was doing. So the, so the, I, I used to throw this illusion it's an illusions bait uh bladed jig but it had an underspin on the bottom as well and that's what i was used to throwing when i was throwing a bladed jig and i throw it deep and just fish it like a like a deep crankbait basically running across the rocks running across the and so that's kind of how i started fishing the jackhammer and i really didn't like it but yeah like i said now that i've you know kind of kind of changed it up a little bit I've, i see why everybody really likes it so. Is there a bait for 2021 that you think you need to get better at? Probably the jackhammer. <laughs> um, I mean, that seems to catch fish everywhere. Man. So, um. I, I don't want to say there's a specific bait that I want to get better at, but I need to work on patience with deep water fishing. And the way the – way, excuse my – Excuse my dog there. I don't know if you heard him, but um, that I want to start out with the Carolina rig, the old ball and chain, and working it, working it pretty slow, um, and just really trying to focus and key in on those deep water fish where, you know, Casey knows, and I'm sure you guys know too. Like you can really generate some giants yeah. out of those deep water areas and in, in the in the summertime and. And even the pre-spawn, you know, you can really catch them out there really good like that. Um, that's something I need to work on is that that deeper water column of fishing. Um, I'm a I'm a bank beater. I'm a run and gun kind of just want to constantly move and hit stuff, visual targets. And um, I need to work on that deep water stuff. It's good to be versatile. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And kind of the, the last question I wanted to ask here, um, if there's somebody who's watching this and they haven't stepped out, maybe they've been fishing a lot of local stuff and they're wanting to get out on the national trail. Y'all been doing this for a few years. Um, is there some kind of advice that you would give somebody that's thinking about going out to fish a KBF or fish a Hobie? Uh, what, what advice would you give to those, those people that are thinking about doing it? I would say before you invest uh, a lot of money in it, go to your grassroots trails, man. Go to where, you know, go to the smaller groups and, and learn the inner workings of how these tournaments work. Because, I mean, they all have their individual differences, but generally they're all the same. Um, you know, it's the same style of, of tournament. Um, go there and, and, and learn from the folks that, that do it for fun. And, and develop that joy of competition for fun before you drop 200 250 300 dollars on an entry fee to go fish somewhere nationally and 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 maybe you're not mentally ready maybe you're not uh, skill level ready but you can build that on on those grassroots trails and and those grassroots trails are really what keeps kayak fishing growing you yeah. know i mean the, the national trails have the same people every year with a couple additions. But if you look at your grassroots trails, man, they're all expanding. You know, Th those are the ones that I think that people need to start with. And, you know, and as, as they gain confidence in what they're doing, they really need to, from there, branch out to the national level and, and, and start doing that. And then the online challenges, too, that you can learn a lot in the online challenges. And you can, I mean, Casey, Casey proved it last year. You can you can make enough money to cover all of your national level entry fees by all lines. <laughs> That's right. So, you know, it's, it's, you know, if you're good and like, you know, in his case, like I know what this dude's capable of. That's why I want him to come out there on that Hobie trail. Um, if you're good, you can go out there and really pull, pull in some cash. Just yeah. do online stuff. 
do that. Onlines and grassroots is what I would say. How about you, Case? Yeah, I mean, that, he, he hit it right on the head. Um, but, I mean, the, at the same time, man, sometimes j- just get out there and fish one of them, you know. See what it's like. Talk to some of the yeah. people that are doing it. And don't go out there expecting to win some money. Like, that's the biggest thing because you're going to get it. I mean, you can you could go out there and win it, but at the same time, you're most likely going to get let down a few times. So just don't 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 do it to make money. Just do it to get out there and meet people. And then you know, once you started fishing the local trails and doing all that stuff, then you'll kind of you know you'll be able to grow and learn, and then and then you'll have a chance to come out here and and take some of our money. <laughs> Reasonable expectations. So in, in reference to what Casey's saying, I got to throw this in there. If any of your viewers have never seen it or, or they don't frequent YouTube a lot, um, Gerald Swindle has a five-part series on positive mental attitude. G-Man is probably the funniest person in bass fishing. He is probably the most easy person to listen to in bass fishing. And the way he breaks down the way your mindset should be on the water helped me exponentially from the first year I did the national stuff where I was let down a lot to the second year I went in with a a different mindset and, and it really changed my way of thinking, especially whenever it comes to losing fish. Uh, I I lose a fish the first year I was, man, you, you knew I lost it. Um, but this year, you know, lose a fish, and, and a lot of times I might smack the lure against the water, but that lure right after that's going right back out where it needs to go. And, you know, and you got to be, you got to have a short memory, and, and you got to convince yourself that you're going to catch them. You're going to catch them. In your mind, you're going to catch them. Regardless of whether you actually do or not, you can worry about that after the fact. But in your mind, you have to, you, you're going to catch them. So right. that five part series by G Man, I recommend to anybody and everybody that wants to start tournament fishing. Yeah, it, it doesn't take long to catch five fish. So if you're in a tournament and don't have five fish and it's getting, you know, after afternoon and you're struggling, you just gotta keep your head in the game and keep grinding, man. Those five fish could come out at any time. So you you just never give up and, and keep the grind going, man. That's that's the biggest key to tournament fishing because it's not always going to go your way and you just got to like keep that positive mental attitude like jake just mentioned man so jake like you as seminole catching that fish at the end of the day and doing this podcast i don't know how many people i've heard at the end of the day catching that last fish to win the tournament keeping your head at all day all right, at the end of the show, we always like to give people a, a chance to thank anybody that makes it easy for them. We'll start with you, Jake, and I, I'm, a, I'm going to suggest, because your wife's in the room, to make sure to thank her first. <laughs> so uh, I want to send a special thank you out to my girlfriend. There you um, go, girlfriend, I'm sorry. There and, you go. And then my wife. Um, oh! No, I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> That's terrible. Um, no, but I, I, I couldn't do it without her, uh, her support, letting me go fishing. Um, and you know, my kids supporting me and always the kind messages of, you know, Hey, we're proud of you and, you know, keep grinding. So that's first and foremost, um, big players this year for me were Torquedo, um, Jeff Little and that team there, uh, really proud to be a part of that. And uh, Innovative Sportsman, who makes the Torquedo accessories, um, he basically made my my Predator PDL. In my mind, he made it the, the, the perfect boat. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, Temple Fork Outfitters, make they make some really great rods. Uh, and Amphibia Eye Gear, who makes one of the very, I think it might be the only kind of sunglasses that float. They float. And, and they're 100% polarized. Yeah. So, you know, and, and the lenses are, are ANSI rated for safety. So, you know, those those folks right there really make it possible for me. And, and I have a, another guy locally here, Brian Swingle at Five Mountain Outfitters, who's a big supporter. And anytime I need something, I call him up and, and he gets it for me. And, and, uh, 
and also the dugout bait and tackle down in Marietta, Georgia. They're not local to me, but uh, Jamie Coza and that group down there are unmatched in this business. They are fantastic. There you go. And how can people, if they're trying to find you online or on YouTube, where, where can they find you? Everything. If you search PA.KayakBassin, you, I think you'll find me in every social media platform that I have. Well, Facebook, Instagram, and social, and um, yeah, and YouTube. There you go. All right, Casey, how about you, man? Tell us about the beautiful cash and rods. Yeah, so I mean, I just just got on the cashing team here recently, and man, they they are unbelievable rods. So sensitive. Um, got some of the best grips I've ever felt. So I, I'm I'm really loving all these new Icon series, and um, I think there's going to be some pretty cool stuff coming out. Uh, hopefully, pretty soon with with them. So stay tuned for that. But um, it's always Old Town. I mean, they've been supporting me for for quite a few years now. Uh, you know, they've, they've, they've really hooked me up this year, got me in the autopilot, freaking unbelievable kayak, man. I've, I'm just in love with it. Uh, Dakota lithium powering that, that Mencota motor, um, can't say enough good things about them. Uh, we got, uh, fish USA, you know, Anytime, anytime I need something right before a tournament, I can get my order in and they'll get it to me as soon as, as soon as they can. So that's really great. Got a, got a good team of supporters that, that helped me out and, um, you know, kind of make, make doing what I do possible. So. And if I can add to that, what he's saying, um, I for completely brain farted Dakota lithium, has is what gives me the ability to power my live scope and my you know my garmin fish finder i don't know how long it'll last because i haven't had it die on me yet um those batteries are incredible like i don't know what i don't know what they got in them but whatever they got in them is amazing what what battery are you running for that Uh, i run the 54 amp hour and so I bought the 54 because I was running I was running two Garmin 93 SVs. I was I was running one of them with the Panoptics and one of them with the UHD side imaging and all that. And uh, I mean I, I would run them all day long, both both units. And and I I mean I think the longest I went before I put it on charge, not because it died, was like a like probably 15 16 hours. Um, before I was like, I should probably charge this thing because I don't know when it's going to die. It just won't die. I don't, I mean, <laughs> the, the batteries are amazing. There you go. You know that, uh, that uh, the pan optics, man, that, that takes a lot of juice too. So Amp draw is crazy on that thing. Yeah. 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 There you go. We appreciate y'all guys and everybody hold on just a minute. We're going to take a break and we'll be right back. All right, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, if you can believe it, it's cold out there, but we did have a tournament this week. Uh, Oklahoma Kayak Anglers and Natural State Kayak Anglers, they had their uh, battle at the border on Chimney Rock <laughs> Lake, 49 anglers. Uh, and we're going to go over five people, top five, since there was only one tournament. Jeff Herr with 84 and a quarter. He got first. Jack Miller with 80 inches. Tyler Zengerler. Z E N G E R L E. I'm from Mississippi. I'm sorry. 80 inches. <laughs> uh, Hu- Hua Zong with, I think I'm saying that right, man. I don't know. 79 uh, and three quarter. Tim Hotchkin with 79 and three quarter as well. So congratulations to all of them. Uh, but also, since we have Brian on, we're going to talk about the Paddling Fin Trail next year. Uh, we were talking about, you know, that kind of. Mississippi River, that Wisconsin, that whole area up there, Ohio, that whole region. So, yeah, Paddling Fin Trail, brother. What you got? Yeah, man. Uh, we actually have our championship going down at Lacrosse, and it's uh, the week before the Hobie event. So, um, good time you know, to practice. There's, a, there's a good way to, uh, you know, use our championship to practice for that, so on and so forth. But, um we got an open event, two-day open event, um, April 9th and 10th on Dale Hollow in Tennessee. 
And then that Sunday, 411, we got uh, what we're dubbing the Clash of Clubs, um, which our goal is to get 50 grassroots clubs from around the nation to come battle it out for top club in the nation. Um, We've had a great response on that since we put that out, and I'm not sure what the total number of clubs is currently, but I can tell you it's uh, somewhere around 30 or 40. So we're pretty darn close to that 50 club goal. Um, and and what, what that is, if if you didn't already know, if you have a club that you're trying to be your top five in AOI, let's say me and my local club is Iron City Kayak Anglers. We're going to send our top five in AOI, or it might be top six because it might roll down one. Let's say everybody sure. in your top five can't go. So you'll send one, two, three, four, and six to the clash of clubs at Dale hollow. And so individually we'll pipe fish the open and then Sunday would be the clash of clubs, right? Yeah, for sure. For sure. And, um, for the open, um, I believe we did, I'll have to go back and check my notes. All this info is on our website at paddle on the tournaments tab, but I believe it's either the, top 10 or top 20 percent um qualify for the championship in lacrosse for the open um you know the trail is kind of based in the midwest um but that open event was kind of a central hub to the whole country um we figured we'd have a lot of anglers coming down for the clash of the club so that's why we wanted to do the open event and um give some folks uh, an opportunity to qualify for the championship in lacrosse um and, and, and the, still hollow it's just beautiful if you've never been there world record small the world record smallmouth came out of there go fish it it's, it's 11 beautiful. pounds right something yeah. like that 10 yeah. 11 pounds one of the most beautiful but, in the country just go yeah in that time of the year it's supposed to be super hot um pretty much uh pre-spawn or right at spawn yeah. uh the beginning of april there so it should be um super super fishing super super good i know we all fish there this fall it wasn't that great but um, yeah, the, the owners of the the resort that we stayed at he said he picked a week and he said the best week of the year this is when you want to fish yeah. that's when we set up the tournament so the best weekend of the year every year this is it this is when you want to fish go fish it yeah, and and also to dub into that, um, you know, Eastport Marina is uh, giving us a location. We have a sweet layout. Even if COVID is still an issue, um, the beginning of the next year, um, we have a 90-acre farm where we could spread out. Uh, we're going to have live music one night. There's going to be food, drinks available at uh, check-in. Uh, we got some vendors coming out, setting up booths, um, possibility of boat demos, things like that. So even if you're not going to come and fish and you just want to come and be a spectator or a fan or just hang out, um, it's just going to be a great weekend. Um, you know, originally we were going to do this in the fall, but uh, the national championships in the fall, Hobie TOC, um all that good stuff so uh we wanted to kind of base this around um uh, you know kicking the season off because that's how the national championship used to be now that that kbf has moved that back to the fall um we figured why not uh have a great way to kick off the year um by doing the open event and the clash of clubs and uh, a pretty sweet location uh to do so um and then the actual trail, we got um, five stops. Um, first one, end of April, is Tippecanoe River in Indiana. Uh, giant smallmouth in there. Um, there's also largemouth. There's two lakes, but the main river stretch is where I think a lot of anglers are going to focus their attention on. Um, then we go to Michigan for the cold water chain. Uh, I believe it's six lakes total with uh, moving water connected through it. So like part of the uh, idea behind the trail when we were developing it was to have not only lake fishing, but moving water fishing 
available because you got river guys and you got lake guys. A lot of tournaments take place on lakes. Uh, so we wanted to have like an equal opportunity for both style anglers. Um, from right. there, we go up to the Madison chain. Uh, that's the beginning of June. That should be super hot. That should be the spawn. Giant smallmouth and largemouth should be caught in that tournament. Um, then we have a, a strictly river tournament here in Illinois. That's the Fox River. Great smallmouth, largemouth. You may even run into a couple northern pike um, and a chance at some muskies. But, you know, obviously it's a bass tournament. But um, we got a huge stretch going there. Um, and then we finish off the trail in Ohio. Uh, we're fishing Lake Erie in the Maumee River. Uh, so that's in the Toledo area. Um, again, another great spot for both largemouth and smallmouth. Um, our, our AOI point structure. So basically at each event, if you place in, uh, the top five, you're automatically in the championship, uh, places six through 10th, uh, will get, or I'm sorry, six through 11th, I believe it is, um, place into the invitational, which will be, uh, the day before the championship. Um, if you're one through 50 in AOI, uh, you'll automatically qualify for the championship. If you're 51 through hundred, you will be invited to the invitational, um, invitational will be a one day event. Uh, the top, uh, 20% will qualify for the championship. The rest of the invitational field will stick around or the following day and fish for a big bass pot, similar to what KBF does uh, when the top 100 goes down. Um, so we thought that'd be a great idea. So that way guys aren't wasting all their time traveling just to fish one day. Um, so give them an incentive to stick around and fish, um, <clears throat> you know, if they don't make it into the championship. The goal is to kind of have the championship be 100 anglers. Um, possibly a little less. Um, and, and it's really a way for, you know, you have to work your way into that championship, uh, whether it be, you know, taking a, a top five finish, uh, things like that. AOI will be calculated on your best three scores. Uh, the open does not count as AOI points. That's just an open format. So you can just qualify for the championship there won't be any invitational uh, spots given away at that, I believe. Um, so uh, championship, you know, we got some sponsors that are throwing in some prize money. So um, we're going to pretty much focus that mostly on the payout for the championship. So it's a, a very nice payout at the end of the year. Um, it's a hundred percent payback minus fees, you know, uh, PayPal and, um, uh, tourney X. Um, you're not keeping money on this. What? Come on. No, no. Um, actually it'll probably be more than that when you figure in sponsor prizes and, and things of that nature. Um, so yeah, it'll be good. Now, what I didn't mention is, um, you know, a lot of people are like, how is this different from other tournaments? Well, we're going to have actual guys on kayaks with cameras on the water footage. We're going to have a live stream going at every event, things like that. At the championship, uh, day one, you fish. And if you only the top 10 will fish day two. So the guys from day one uh, that didn't make that top 10 will do another big bass pot for them. Um, day two, each guy will be paired up with a camera boat, following them around on the water, completely live streamed. Um, so it's kind of a different avenue. It's going to, it's going to kind of have that MLF feel where you got camera boats following guys and gals around on the water, um, live up to date coverage, um, leaderboard coverage. You know, we will have, um, I'm sure, you know, we've talked about it. I'm not going to give away everything but small video clips 
playing throughout, you know, all these streams. Uh, the, the real thing is to highlight the anglers. Um, you know, it's not about highlighting paddle and fin. It's, it's a way to, uh, kind of show off the guys and gals fishing, uh, what they're doing, what they're capable of and things of that nature. So, um, it's going to be pretty exciting. I'm looking forward to it. You know, the schedule came out pretty killer. Um, you know, I'm super stoked for the clash of clubs cause we don't really have anything like that. Um, you know, um, it'll be cool to see all the grassroots clubs just coming, uh, seeing the camaraderie, the trash talk, all that good stuff, you know, go down and then somebody's going to have a, uh, a trophy to take home and carry for a year until, uh, you know, the following year when the next clash of clubs happens. And, um, it, it'll be cool to see how that all, all goes down and plays out, but, um, it'll be super interesting. Um, I'm sure we're going to have more shows about that coming up as, uh, we get into 2021. But, uh, if you guys are looking for any of the info, like I said, go to paddle and fin.com, um, go to the, tournament tab up at the top all the rules are there uh all the events um you know payout structure type stuff and all that fun jazz and currently i think i'm not sure if the payout structure is up there i believe it is but that that's just straight entry fees that's not any bonus money that you know uh sponsors are thrown in things like that we haven't figured any of that in yet we're waiting till we get to the season, we have total dollars and know how we can spread that amongst it. So, um, super cool. If anybody's got any questions, feel free to, uh, reach out to myself or Susie. Susie is our uh, main TD. She's got the most experience running, uh, clubs and tournaments and things like that. That's the other thing I didn't mention is there's zero membership fee. So it's, it's not like KBF where you're going to pay a membership fee or, or bass or something like that. Um, so it's, it's absolutely free and open to whoever wants to fish. So, um, should be exciting, man. There you go. So, yeah, should be a good time. So, uh, yeah, check all that out. And if you have any questions, like you said, uh, you or Susie, but yeah, go uh, go on Paddle and Finn, check it out. As always, thank you for listening. This will be a last show until after Christmas. We're taking our little break. And uh, uh, as always, thank you. Thank you for being a listener. We really do appreciate y'all. Be safe out there. It's cold. Tell everybody where you're going. A family member, bring a, have a plan. Bring your splash bag. And as always, wear your PFDs. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Peace. Thanks for tuning in to another killer episode on Paddle and Fin. Don't forget to go check out our website at Paddle, the letter N, and Fin.com. Don't forget to check out the YouTube channel at Paddle and Fin. If you got a question, comment, want to hear from a future guest on a future episode, feel free to email us at Paddle, the letter N, and Fin at gmail.com. Don't forget to follow us on social media at Paddle and Fin on Facebook and Instagram. Shout out to our show supporters, Angler, the Angler Button, and and app just makes for a better time on the water and creates a virtual logbook for every fishing outing out on the water. Shout out to Rocktown Adventures located in Northern Illinois for all your kayaking, camping, and hiking needs. TRC Covers, protect your investment. Catch Products, shout out to Catch Products. Go to catchproducts.com and put the Paddle in Fin logo directly on your catch board. Shout out to Jigmasters Jigs. When in doubt, get the jig out. Go to jigmasters.com, use promo code PNF20 and save 20% on all your jig and tackle needs. 